No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast, podcast, episode 30, season 11. Hi, everybody. Well, what have I been up to? I am just trying to enjoy the free time I have because I am being forced to strike by the powers that be that will not negotiate even with the Writers Guild in sag And they have moved the pickets to the morning because it's cooler out in the morning. And so, whereas I used to kind of pick it more like in the 12 to 3 area, um, which kind of just takes up the whole day, if that makes any sense. But now I have these like longer periods of afternoon free, which is great. I'm getting these things done, appointments taken care of, but I am going to Prospect Park a lot, which I really love, which is in Brooklyn. I just walk around. Um, I, yeah, I walk around. I mean, what else do you do in a park? I, I sat on a bench and I did some reading. There was a nice waterfall and I enjoyed the white noise of the waterfall. There's many little waterfalls in the park. I don't know if they're man-made, they're natural, they seem natural. I don't know what the difference is. There's a dog beach, very small, but there's a dog beach there because, you know, it's a giant lake, so they have this little beach area. I'm glad the dogs have somewhere to go to get cooled off. You know, I'm not a dog person, but I don't wish ill on the dogs, but that's good. Sure, they come off the dog beach and they walk around with their owner and they shake themselves off and they splash, I don't know, maybe, uh, don't know where I got this idea, but maybe they splashed a woman reading on the bench. That's fine. You know what? We're all, we're all God's creatures in this park, aren't we? And honestly, I mean, if I'm in a park, what am I wearing? My, my best? Am I in my silks? Am I in my things that can't get wet? No, I don't mind. It's just in general, one of those things where the dog's going to dog. I'm sitting there. Not quite a target. I'm not even near the dog beach. I'm like around the, around the path. But, uh, you know, the owner, you see your dog dripping wet and your dog is walking so happy. It was just in that water. And then the dog stops and goes, and just shakes back and forth. Water spraying everywhere. You'd think as the owner who's standing there with the dog, seeing the water splash on me, reading a book, a paperback, that you'd say, oh, I'm sorry. I know you can't really prevent the dog from stopping there and whipping themselves around, water flying off them like a, some kind of, not wet willy, what do you call those, those water sprinklers? that you have on your front lawn as a kid. Oh, God. Just put me down like a, like a horse. My sister is a horse person. She's got horses on her farm. She teaches lessons. She had a horse that died. They pushed it in a giant grave in the backyard. Just put me down. Just have a vet come over, stick something in me, just push me into a hole. Because what do they call those water sprinklers on the front lawn? But I'm trying to think of the toy ones, not a real one. I'm just going to put Wet Willy, even though I know that's not the name. Willy Waterbug. I don't even think it's this. Oh, kind of is. Whatever. It doesn't. This, it doesn't even matter. And it's not a good analogy. I'm looking at what Willy Waterbug does. And it doesn't quite look like a dog shaking off water but anyway you'd think the owner would say sorry but no this you know doesn't say anything people are just so checked out it's not even even in the spirit of ah isn't that fun look at my dog you must love dogs you must love getting dog wet on you in the park on your paperback book there ah we're all having fun I would even appreciate that at least it's a take at least it's a point of view you know at least the dog owner is just thinking everyone's everyone's loving it But there was just no sign of life behind those eyes, you know, just everyone's a zombie. As I say, everyone's got some kind of long COVID or something. Everyone's brain is broken. So it's like, there's just no reaction. I don't even think they know that there's someone sitting there and that their dog is 
making it rain on the person. It's just no reaction at all. So they went on about their day and I kept reading and it was delightful. But then we have these bugs here. Um, I actually don't know if they're anywhere else in the country, but they're called a spotted lantern fly. And they're beautiful, by the way. You know those bugs that are beautiful, but they're creepy at the same time? Like a real butterfly is very beautiful. I guess if you look up close, it's a little bit creepy, the body of it. But these have this very sinister look. But but their spots are beautiful, but they kind of have like reds, you know, like darker colors. It looks like a bug Melania Trump would design. Does that make sense? They look like her Christmas at the White House. We'll have red and black and white. What? That's not Christmas? That's Christmas to me. It looks like that. So anyway, they're called the spotted lantern fly. They can have devastating effects on local plant populations. You are supposed to kill the bugs. And if you see any of them, you have to report your sighting to forest.health at parks.nyc.gov. And they were actually like way more of them, I think last summer or the summer before. But there were all these articles like, no, like, don't be nice. You have to kill them. They will destroy the environment. They are an invasive insect species. Report them. Kill them. Kill them before they find a way to hatch. But they are uh, known to be like the, like hitchhikers. They They stick on things. They're not sticky, but they'll just grab onto you like you might see one on your purse strap or your shoulder and so anyway I'm sitting there reading and I see this bug on my arm I feel it and I look and at first this doesn't really register because I have my reading glasses on that I can only see the page with and then if I look at anything else it's kind of blurry and I thought oh that's like a huge ladybug and then I went oh oh and it's one of those lantern things lantern flies spotted lantern fly so I just whipped it off my arm I wasn't going to smash it on my arm I whipped it off my arm thinking it would go on the ground and I'd step on it and it whipped and then it went onto the woman next to me we weren't sharing the same bench but she was on a bench next to my bench but she was sort of canoodling with her boyfriend and it was on her back and I would have had to get up and say, sorry, there's a spotted lantern fly on your back. I would have had to sit, hit it off of her back, hope that it hit the ground and step on it. If it didn't land on the ground, it would have flown away. She wouldn't have known what I'm saying. I couldn't remember what those bugs were called. That was the main point. Getting back to my bad memory here. I couldn't remember that it was called the spotted lantern fly. I just recognized it as these are the bugs we're supposed to kill. And so I've... I've had this before happen in New York City. I saw one on a sidewalk and there was a, a, a young woman sitting on her stoop reading and there was a bunch, there was like two or three on the sidewalk in front of her and I went bam, bam, bam and stepped on them all and she sort of looked at me like, Jesus. And I said, sorry, it's, it's the, you know, it's those bugs we're supposed to kill. She said, oh yeah, I've heard that. I just can't kill bugs. I just can't. Wait, stop that. Stop that. This is the one you're supposed to kill. You can do whatever you want with spiders. That's your own business. We're so... Ay, ay, ay. Listen to me. These people that don't understand nature, you know, like sometimes if, if areas are overrun with deer or turkeys, you gotta, you gotta kill them. You gotta help not destroy nature by helping the animals get rid of some other population. It's a thing, people. If you think you're all like spiritually advanced and I just love all breathing things, well, then what you would do is you would kill the spotted lantern fly because it's helping the environment. I, I hate people like that where they're so black and white that you're like, you're actually doing the wrong thing right now. So anyway, I've run into people in New York before that are freaked out by stepping on these bugs. So I didn't want to get into it with that woman. So I just, 
um, flicked it. It landed on her shoulder. I figured any minute now her boyfriend will notice. And I, wa- I walked away. And I know you're thinking, Jen, you just told a story about someone with a dog that got water all over you. And you thought that was kind of rude. But you were supposed to kill this bug per the New York City government health department. You didn't. You let it get on a person. It's not, not going to harm her. And you didn't tell her and you left. That's right. I'm t- I, I had a, a, a vibe. I knew a witch vibe. This, this isn't going to make any sense and it's going to be a whole thing. I'm just going to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Whatever. R- report me. I just gave you the email address. Go have report me. Give them the link to this episode. I don't want, I don't need any of your judgment. Anyway, oh, but I was never allowed to have, going back to the wet willy or wandering willy or whatever it was called, I was never allowed to have things like that or the slip and slide, which is just basically a long yellow piece of vinyl that you get wet and you slide down it on your lawn. It's not even a slide like a... uh, normal slide we climb up a little and slide down it just horizontal flat on the ground I guess you just kind of take a running leap and we slide a foot anyway it's just an excuse to be rolling around in the water right but my dad being the groundskeeper that he is that ruins the grass Jennifer we can't be doing that you get ah geez no you put that thing on there and then just all, it gets all mud. It kills the grass. No. So I wasn't allowed to have it. And gotta remember, we live on the golf course. So when, when golfers are going from, I think, the third to the fourth hole, they have to walk by our house on the sidewalk. Like our backyard is the fourth hole. So yeah, you can have a nice lawn. It's an extension of the golf course. So we weren't allowed to do that. I just had those industrial size sprinklers. That if you got your fingers up to right where the water was coming out, it was like a fire hose. It was so strong that running through the sprinkler was mildly, ah, ow. I still loved it. I love running through the sprinkler. I love when there's a little rainbow. But running through the sprinkler was, you know, not something that we just did willy-nilly, no pun intended to all the times I've been saying willy. Because you don't water the lawn in the middle of the day because the sun is just going to drink that water right up. It's a waste of water. Doesn't help the grass. You got to water in the morning before the sun rises and at night after the sun sets. That's when you water the grass. Let it soak in. So I'd be, I'd be running through the sprinkler. Sunrise and sunset, people. That was my time. That was my summertime fun. Anyway, so I'm, I'm walking through the park the other day. I get an ice cream. I stop at like a Mr. Softy kind of truck. Oh, my God. I love a soft serve swirl chocolate vanilla with rainbow sprinkles. And I want it in a cone because I like how that feels. I like when they roll the cone in the sprinkles, you know, same vibe as a warm corn on the cob and you just roll it over that stick of butter. You coat it. I love it. But it was hot out and I knew this is going to start melting and I'm going to get all over my hands. And blah, 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 blah. So I got it in a cup. This young person, I don't know, were they 18 to 22? Is this Gen Z? What generation is this? Whatever generation it is, you got to learn something from Generation X, especially someone like me who worked at Baskin Robbins for four years. You got to put the sprinkles in the cup first and then put the ice cream in because this person did the swirl and I saw it happening. Oh, God, they're not going to put this in. And then they just dip like, well, no, first what they did is they took a spoon and tried just, you know, there's like 20 sprinkles on the spoon and then they're holding it up over the ice cream swirl that's in the cup. Just, you know, whatever, whatever doesn't land on the counter. It was like five sprinkles land on the ice cream. They do that about three times. They get tired of doing it because they're getting sprinkles everywhere. They're not even doing it over the, the basket of sprinkles so that they can go back in. 
But I guess this person doesn't want to stick the whole cup inside the uh, sprinkles bucket, which you, it's a, you can do it because it, it's not germ, germy. You didn't lick the ice cream and then stick it in the sprinkles bucket. It, just go ahead, dip that thing in, roll it around. Nope. That would be fine. I mean, it wouldn't be good enough, but it would be fine. And so, you know, I have my five sprinkles, and I said, oh, is it? Oh. And they said, well, do you want more? I said, yeah. And they said, it's just really hard to get it on. I said, yeah, you, you can put it in the bottom of the cup. And then they said, yeah, but I don't, that's, like, that's not how I was taught to do it. I said, oh, okay. Like, very, like, I was taught this. And almost had the energy of I'm not allowed to. You know, like the boss is going to be like, I keep ordering sprinkles after sprinkles. We're losing money at this truck. Who is giving away too many sprinkles? So I just walked away and what, what I enjoyed the sprinkles I had, but when I got to the three fourths that was left of the ice cream, I just had to eat plain chocolate and vanilla swirl with no rainbow sprinkles. And I was like, there's nothing to look forward to at that point, you know? As, the, as it's melting at the bottom of the cup, you're not even going to be able to scoop it up and just eat sprinkles with melted ice cream. No, it's just, it's just nothing to look forward to. you got to put the sprinkles at the bottom of the cup, then do the swirl, and then add more so that it's surrounded. A delight in every bite. We thought of these things, us Gen Xers. How can we have more fun. How can we rip off the man? The corporations that own these trucks that want to screw you, that want to overcharge and then under deliver and you're not getting the sprinkles you deserve. We, we were always, you know, we're going to do our own thing here. So I just, I'd like to teach the younger people. I don't care what you were taught. I'm telling you, put the sprinkles at the bottom of the cup. All right, if you'd like to hear the rest of this episode, and trust me, I think you do, all kinds of fun things going on this week, head on over to patreon.com. You can get a seven-day free trial to see if you like, no fun. And if you do, you can sign up for as little as $2.99 a month, depending on how many episodes you want. You get a discount if you sign up for a year. And this is the uh, only income I have right now. So support a writer on strike who will probably be on strike we're here and it could go through the holidays. So I didn't expect to be out of work for seven months, but here we are, uh, potentially seven months. So far, it has been three, all of May, all of June, all of July. We're going into August. Dear God. All right, I'll see you over there then on Patreon. That's right. We made a deal. 